Uh, welcome to this particular module. Uh, last time in the last module what we have seen? We have seen uh, indicator circuits and within indicator circuits we have seen monolithic indicator circuit, hybrid circuits, thin and thick film technology based uh, ICs. Right. Now, what is the reason of understanding uh, the indicator circuits when the when the title says the electronic module for industrial applications using operational amplifiers. The reason is that when you are talking about operational amplifier you have to fabricate operational amplifier uh, and uh, that operational amplifier can be fabricated with the technique or technology called microfabrication. Now, when we talk about microfabrication then we have to understand on what substrate you are going to fabricate the device right. So, what are the substrates? The substrates can be silicon, substrate can be glass, substrates can be 1 silicon glass and third is polymers right. So, uh, in, in, in the case of op amps or 95 percent of the ICs silicon is used as a substrate. Now, when silicon is used as a substrate we should know how the silicon is manufactured right and once we know how silicon is manufactured then only we will know that on the silicon substrate how you are going to process uh, different steps such that you can end up with having an entire operational amplifier which is consisting of thousands of transistor in itself right. So, uh, with that particular goal let us uh, see this module quickly where we will see how the silicon is uh, uh, manufactured and uh, well, I also talked about clean room. So, I have a video for you uh, how the clean room looks like and uh, because the point is when you fabricate a device it is within clean room. When you fabricate an op amp or any other circuits right uh, indicator circuits it is within the clean room uh, environment. So, what exactly clean room is and what are the procedure to work in a clean room right. So, I have two videos at the end of this module uh, let us see the first slide and when you see the first slide what is it what exactly the silicon is. So, if you see silicon, silicon bowls and wafers, we have a silicon bowl through which you slice the silicon bowl to form the wafers uh, and then uh, like last module we have seen that looking at this picture where what do you think? We think that the, 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 the silicon bowl is manufactured in a clean room and this is a clean, uh, clean room uh, governing procedure uh, where uh, a person has to govern uh, so that there is a minimal contamination uh, onto the actual bowl. Actually the contamination should be as low as possible and that is depending on the class of the clean room that we discussed in the last module. Now, when you want to understand how exactly you get this silicon wafer right then you need to understand what is the procedure. The procedure to uh, get this silicon wafer uh, is you start with melting of polysilicon, introduce a seed crystal, begin the rotating of crystal and then pull the crystal slowly and you will see a formation of a bowl right and the same thing is shown here uh, there is a YouTube video uh, please go to it uh, please watch the YouTube video and you will understand the procedure of uh, getting the uh, silicon bowl uh, from the poly polysilicon. Now, when you talk about the crucible, the crucible consists of a crucible shaft, there is a silicon melt, a crucible, a heater, thermal shield and then you have a single crystal silicon seed where you dip in the uh, molten silicon uh, and then you pull it up. When you pull it up you will see there is a uh, shoulder neck, uh, there is a shoulder neck or uh, crystal neck, there is a shoulder and the formation of the silicon bowl. So, uh, this this is a known process there are two process one is called Zokralski technique and second one is called float zone technique right there are two techniques to form the silicon uh, anyway the, we, we are not too much interested in understanding those technique uh, we should just know uh, how the things are uh, 
done because we are interested in understanding the silicon wafer right because silicon wafer is the substrate on which we are going to fabricate several th thousands of transistors. Now, uh, the same procedure is shown here that you have polysilicon in the crucible you heat it up and then you pull uh, put the silk crystal or load the silk crystal pull it up by in a rotating fashion what you will get you will get a single crystal ingot and then you, you do the trimming of the edges and once that is done you have to do a flat grinding. Now, this is very important step this flat grinding why we require this flat grinding I will tell you uh, this flat grinding is important to form the primary flat what is called primary flat. So, in a silicon wafer you will have primary flat and you will have secondary flat primary flat and secondary flat. Okay. In some silicon wafer you will only see one single flat which is primary flat. So, what is the role of primary flat we will see quickly I uh, will also show you the, uh, uh, the silicon wafers. So, once you have the flat grinding you slice the wafer then do the edge rounding lapping wafer etching polishing because finally, you want to have a polished surface. Uh, finally, you have to do the wafer inspection this is the man wafer manufacturing process, but when you uh, so, so if you see this further uh, you can see that these are ingots and when you want to slice the uh, single wafer from the ingot you have to use a diamond coated wire um, and, and it is the procedure is shown here uh, and then the lapping machine uh, the schematic is shown here this lapping and polishing is used to polish the surface of the wafer. Uh, now you see very interesting thing right um, I told you there are two flats primary and secondary. Dep why we require primary flat you see in all the cases there is a one single <laughs> flat called primary flat right. With respect to primary flat there is a secondary flat in this case there is no secondary flat secondary flat is absent. In this case secondary flat is right over here in this case here in this case here right. So, if there is no uh, secondary flat secondary flat this is primary flat right. If there is no secondary flat the wafer is P type 111. If there is a secondary flat at 90 degree with respect to primary flat the wafer is P type 100. If the secondary flat it uh, is at 45 degree with respect to primary flat it is N type 111. And finally, when you have secondary flat with respect to primary flat at 100 it is called uh, uh, sorry secondary flat with respect to primary flat at 180 degree 180 degree with respect to primary flat then your wafer is N type 100. What I mean is that if you have a secondary flat with respect to primary flat uh, at 180 you have 100, 45, 111 these both are n types if you have p type the secondary flat would be at 90 degree with respect to primary flat or there will be no secondary flat understood that is the importance of your primary flat. So, let us see how silicon wafer looks like now you can see uh, I am wearing a glove if you can focus here. So, to hold the wafer yeah so I am wearing a glove right because to hold a wafer we cannot use uh, our bare hand that is wrong the the contamination occurs in a device because of uh, the contamination carried by humans. So, as long as we, we follow the process in a fab lab the device would be uh, uh, correct you will have less failures your your throughput would be higher your accuracy will be higher and the device will fail less. So, wearing a glove this is called tweezer this tweezer is to hold the wafer all right we have to hold a wafer like this. Hmm. So, now let me show you some wafer I have brought with me so that you can understand on what kind of uh, substrate. So, this is a wafer holder by the way this is a wafer holder right on which we are holding the wafer. Now, I am taking out the uh, wafer let me wear my another glove because I do not want to contaminate my wafer. Uh, of, of course, when I am bringing the wafer out of the clean room there is a contamination. So, I had to clean the wafer uh, if I want to use it again. Uh, again uh, this is not allowed when you are working in a uh, in a fab lab uh, in, a, in a class 10 class 100 environment right. So, uh, once you take out the wafer it is gone it is contaminated. 
So, it is very difficult to understand uh, or, or to work uh, 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 following the rules because uh, a, a small mistake in your process where can kill thousands of chip all right. So, you need to be careful. Now, this is a wafer holder like I said right and I am holding now a silicon wafer. Hmm? A silicon wafer is in my hand and you can now see that uh, the there is a primary flat right over here right and if you see uh, then you will see a secondary flat over here yeah that that is enough thank you a secondary flat over here ok. So, secondary flat and a primary flat ok. So, now where is the secondary flat with respect to primary flat? The secondary flat is at 180 degree with respect to the primary flat. What does that mean? If the secondary flat is at 180 degree with respect to primary flat, it is n type 100. This is silicon wafer, easy. That is why all the wafer has a primary flat. Okay, that is the idea. Now, if you see the back side of the silicon wafer, back side of silicon wafer looks rough compared to the front side, right. In the front side, you can see a glow, you can see like a mirror kind of surface, it is polished one, but if you see the back side is difficult, no, see. So, this is a single side polished wafer. In some cases, we require double side polished wafer. So, when you have the wafer, uh, when you have the uh, why you require lapping and polishing, so that the roughness of the wafer can be reduced and you can get a smooth wafer, smooth surface as I am showing you to you, it to you right now. Now, prime the single side polished wafer is uh, comparatively cheaper than the double side polished wafer. This is single side polished wafer. If I have double side polished wafer, then it is comparatively uh, costlier. Single side is cheaper, double side is costlier tweezer you can hold the wafer in a fashion I am showing it to you right over here right and this is how the wafer is holded right it depends on how you want to place it ok. So, you want to place it in the uh, in the uh, lithography section mask liner right then you have to adjust your primary flat with respect to secondary flat and so on. Now, uh, again you see that uh, if you see the color the color is not really gray this is like uh, a little bit brownish color uh, not exactly gray and the reason is because there is a thin layer of silicon dioxide on the silicon wafer thin layer of silicon dioxide on the silicon wafer ok. So, what I have shown you I have shown you the silicon wafer and you can see that with respect to uh, primary flat in the secondary flat is at 180 degree we can easily identify it is an it is a 100 wafer right I am holding another wafer again 100 you see the secondary flat here with respect to primary flat is at 180 degree single side polished wafer single side polished wafer right ok good. So, there are several uh, steps that one has to follow to fabricate a MOSFET right uh, and that comes in the lithography uh, and microfabrication and fabrication this is another wafer. Uh, the secondary flat is respect uh, is at 180 degree with respect to primary flat and you can see there are some uh, patterns on this on the oxidized silicon wafer right. Now, this pattern are for some sensors, uh, but irrespective of that I was just telling you that this is how you can fabricate uh, MOSFETs as well right. The, the process remains same the equipment would change the mask would change the recipe would change right, but you have to still go for a fab lab you have to still fabricate a device. <coughs> okay. Having said that, <coughs> I'll just uh, put the wafers back. Right. Once you are done with the wafer, you don't have to use it. You have to throw your gloves right into a garbage bin. All right. You don't have to reuse the glove. That is a wrong way of uh, working in a laboratory. Please, once you once you use the glove, discard the glove. So, just to avoid contamination, just to avoid contamination. Okay. Now, if you further see the uh, slide, uh, what you see is a types of wafer we have seen. Now, this is a video, okay. this is a video, let me play it 
and this video will show it to you what exactly clean room and classes are. Now, the, uh, the advantage of understanding this video is that we need to understand what exactly uh, the clean room classes are there and what exactly a clean room is. Okay? So, I hope you have seen the video and uh, you understood what is clean room. Now, if that you know what is clean room, you should also know what are the governing protocols. What is a clean room governing protocol? So, let us see this particular video from Terra Universal. The earlier video was from uh, uh, Global Industrial. This is from Terra Universal. Again, this is a YouTube link. You can uh, again go back and see the YouTube link uh, and you will see uh, a video uh, where it where where we can see how the governing protocol we have to follow. All right, and let me play it for you. Where do most clean room contaminants come from? Usually, they come from the people who work there. That means that a well-designed gowning room and rigorously enforced gowning procedures are vital to maintaining your required cleanliness classification. 
In this video, we'll review the procedures personnel should follow to get clean room ready and some of the Terra Universal gowning equipment that supports gowning protocol. Equipment and protocol depend on your required cleanliness classification. In ISO 8 or 7 clean rooms, frocks are often acceptable. However, a clean room classified as ISO 6, ISO 5, or cleaner generally requires personnel to wear clean room coveralls made of Gore-Tex, Tyvek, or other non-woven material, along with hoods, gloves, and booties. We'll be demonstrating gowning procedures for these applications. Before we get started, I need to mention two principles that will prevent most contamination that occurs during the gowning process. Don't let clean surfaces contact dirty ones. Never touch a clean garment or a clean material until you've washed hands thoroughly and donned clean gloves. Take care that garments don't touch a dirty floor or other surface. A contaminated surface spreads contamination and violates your cleanliness protocol. Second, when gowning, start at the top and work your way down. Once you've donned clean gloves, you can put on your hair cover, hood, face mask, coveralls, and finally, booties. Now let's back up and take that a step at a time. The first step literally in the gowning procedure is to clean street shoes before you enter the gowning room. Terra's automated shoe cleaner includes a HEPA filtered internal vacuum system and multiple rotating brushes to remove particles from deep inside shoe seams. You normally install this outside the gowning room. Adhesive mats positioned at the entrance to the gowning room remove particles from the shoe bottoms. Dirty layers peel off to expose a fresh surface. After you've cleaned shoe tops and bottoms, put on shoe covers to minimize floor contamination. It's a good idea to do this right before you enter the gowning room. Once I'm in the gowning room, the next step is to wash and dry hands thoroughly. Terra's no-touch hand glove washing and drying station, which includes a sound dampened ultra filter dryer, is perfect for you. Put on glove liners if they're required, and then clean room gloves. Terra makes wall mount and bench top glove dispensers for both packaged and unpackaged gloves. Unwashed gloves may require another trip to the wash and drying station. Now that my hands are clean, I'm ready to gown up inside our demonstration gowning space. Again, starting at the top and working my way down. When designing your gowning area, be sure to demarcate the clean floor from the dirty floor. In our set, that side of the gowning bench is the clean area. Only laundered booties are allowed in a designated clean area, which is frequently cleaned with a fresh non-woven mop. This side of the bench is the dirty area where people can stand before they put on clean booties. Another approach is to use Terra's clean room gowning platform, which clearly demarcates the clean area in white from the dirty area in blue. I have all my reusable garments hanging inside Terra's garment and supplies cabinet. The configuration you see here includes one chamber with a hanging rod for frocks and coveralls, and a second with shelves for hoods, masks, and other supplies. Models are available with a fan filtration system that uses a continuous stream of HEPA-filtered air to wash particles off of stored garments. Terra offers coveralls in many materials. Disposable coveralls are generally either Tyvek, polypropylene, or other microporous materials that meet most cleanliness requirements. Reusable garments are made of Gore-Tex or a number of application-specific fabrics, including Vidaro Maxima ESD for static-sensitive environments. First comes a clean bouffant to contain hair. Men with beards will need a beard cover. Next, I'll put on a reusable, freshly laundered hood. Then I attach my face mask. Use an easy clean gowning bench or lean rail to help put on your coverall. Terra's cylinder tube benches feature corner free construction with tube tops to minimize particle accumulation and simplify cleaning. While you're dressing, coveralls touch the floor only in the clean no-step area. Hoods are tucked inside the coverall. Finally, I'll put on my clean room booties. Both booties and gloves should overlap the coverall. 
Benches should be wiped down with a clean, sterile wiper after every use. Well, as you can see, I'm fully garbed and ready to enter the clean room. Well, almost ready. Before I leave the gowning area, I need to perform one more critical procedure, a visual self-check to ensure I haven't missed anything. Terra offers several clean room mirrors to facilitate this process in both wall mount and freestanding designs. The dual-sided mirror you see here uses frameless construction and an electro-polished stainless steel base for easy cleaning and easy positioning where it best suits your room layout. The double plate glass viewing surfaces allow personnel on both sides to perform self-checks, reducing congestion in your gowning room. Okay. So that is the end of uh, this particular module and I hope that uh, you now at least know how what is silicon wafer, uh, types of silicon wafer P type, N type 100111, importance of primary flat, importance of secondary flat, right. Um, the grinding of silicon wafer, polishing of silicon wafer, single side polish, double side polish, right. This is just understanding. Later on, let us see. Uh, if I now now there are several processes. You see, if you talk about MOSFETs, right? What is there? There's a gate, there's a source, there's a drain, and below the gate there is a thin layer of uh, insulator, right? Silicon dioxide. Let's say, how can we grow silicon dioxide, right? Because if I want to use operation amplifier, then like I said, that we have to understand how the fabrication is done. We will just understand very basic of how the silicon dioxide uh, can be grown on a silicon wafer and then we will jump on to the op amp uh, and its data, data sheet that is uh, we will see the characteristics of an operational amplifier right. Till then you take care, uh, I will see you in the next module.